What are the chances that repeated, spaced-out, below-threshold exposure to COVID-19 will end up conferring immunity, similar to diluted virus after passaging? Greetings from Peru. I'm Who not the sure hell the- are you calling spaced out? That's what I want to know. I don't know what after passaging uh, refers to. So I know what the question means. I wasn't quite sure what the analogy for uh, to passaging. Passaging is the laboratory technique. Oh, 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 um, okay. Yep. So the question is asking, if you didn't come down with COVID-19, but you were exposed repeatedly to SARS-CoV-2, would that exposure trigger immunity? Your immune system mm-hmm. seeing fragments. Basically what it's arguing is like a vaccine um, well, we we have there is some evidence, and with COVID nineteen, it's so hard to know what that we think is true is true. There's been so much bad data and yeah. so much bad uh, analysis of the data that are there. But I have seen evidence that looks compelling to me from what I can judge of of the data uh, that there's actually been some background immunity to coronavirus in populations that were imagined to be naive to it, suggesting that exposure potentially to other coronaviruses Mm. might be conferring some immunity. And so if that's true, I think it um, possible that you might end up with some uh, low level immunity to the novel coronavirus with this sort of background low level immunity. It's not exactly the same thing. You're talking about about two different things. It's two different things, but, um, but that first result that I that I just mentioned is incredibly hopeful. The idea that exposure to some of the other rotating, you know, out there coronaviruses can confer some background immunity for the novel coronavirus is exciting. It's actually one of the few really rays of hope in this whole pandemic. Yep. Although I have the uh, the darkness that will absorb that ray of hope. As always. A uh, paper recently emerged that suggested that um, even people who had been infected, I think I'm understanding it correctly. I only briefly looked at it, but even people who had been infected by SARS-CoV-2 didn't necessarily seroconvert and therefore were testing negative on these antibody tests, which also yeah. implies a likely failure of immunity going forward. I think that's correct. Yeah. No, you showed me, I think you just showed me the abstract, but the idea would be that uh, the T cells kicked in enough to uh, allow the person who had been sick to get better, but then uh, no memory cells were generated such that you might have had immunity for a week or two. I'm just making those numbers up, but after being sick with COVID-19, but if you didn't seroconvert, then you had no immunity, you know, within a month after being sick, which is is terrifying. There's a lot of speculation here. One, it likely would be the T cells that did the work, which would then fail to create the B cells that would uh, create memory cells that would give you lasting immunity. Mm -hmm. We don't know what any of the mechanisms are. Frankly, we don't even know that this result is true. Mm -hmm. You know, you would really want to see this result replicated. But if this result is true, it does suggest, A, there may be more SARS-CoV-2 circulating out there than we know because it's evading our tests better than we think. Mm -hmm. Um, And B, that the idea that if you had it your immune might not be true in this case, which would be really bad. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for the darkness, man. (laughs) You're welcome.